Kobe you are busy for many years in this field. Why is it that South Africans are actually not trusting it or maybe never really got into it? If we, if we take rugby as an example here um, and we compare ourselves with New Zealand, I believe that we've got more rugby talent but we always come second because we, we've never formed and shaped a culture of creativity in, in, in rugby. And I think the reason for that, and not only in rugby, I think it's uh, in many other spheres like education, it is also true. And it's this, I think we've become, we, we are too careful. We, we don't want to take, you know, the necessary risks. We are too traditional. We always like to plan and structure and, and, and not go beyond the structures and the plans. If you, if you for instance, listen to rugby players uh, after the match when they interview, they never say, um, you know, that we, we kind of allowed our creativity, you know, to flourish on the field. They would always say, we stuck within the plan, we played according to the plan. So that sort of is in their mind all the time. You know what is interesting? The, the first fact, the first thing they teach you about the brain is that the brain doesn't care what you put into it. You know, if you put a lot of nonsense in your brain, you'd always get a lot of nonsense back. So if you put structure and plan and organization in your brain all the time, that is what your brain will give you back and that is how you will act on a rugby field. That is how you will play. So we need to put something else in our brain from, from preschool, primary school. We need to put in our brain that we are creative human beings and that creativity can always also flourish on a rugby field. We've been for many years in sport isolation. Do you believe that um, we um, missed out on a lot of experience? Um, yeah, I, I think we, we have. I think um, like with anything, be it education or business, whatever, if you cut off from the rest of the world, you really do lose out. And, and I think we did. But again, you know, we've been back for many, many years and I don't think there are any excuses now uh, um, that we should lack and that we should fall behind other countries. We, we do have this inherent creativity to, to be a creative a team while being structured at the same time. I think very, very important to note is that we are not saying that you should not have a plan and have a structure and be disciplined. Of course not, that's nonsense. I think, but, but that is the point of departure. Uh, um, the Americans call it, that is the springboard. And from there you start doing what you need to do. Uh, and I, I mentioned the other day, for instance, that people are uh, forever, coaches are forever focusing on the statistics, on the stats. And then they say, gee, the stats were brilliant. We should have won this match, but we lost. The reason why uh, stats, as we know it, give, uh, is, is a sort of illusion sometimes, it gives you the total wrong uh, um, impression, is that the stats as we deal with it is all left brain stats. It is exactly how many scrums you win, how many line yards, da 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 da, and you won more than your opponents, but you lost because stats never take the right brain into consideration. And I think the time has come that we should look at other things. The 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 surprise move, the surprise move, the the, the player who thought on his feet, who found the space, who did things differently. That should become part of the stats, and that will explain to you why you lost or why you won a match.